crown, seated with Christ in heavenly places. And that's why we can hear the discernment of the Spirit because we're not down here with the mad, the far from the madding crowd, the book says. We're not down here with the rest of the world with the clamor and the clutter and the, and the distraction of the world. I think about what God said to Lori Gibson. I wish I could remember just how he said it when he said something about don't let the clutter of the world. Do y'all remember how he said that? Don't be distracted by the clutter of the world. The world is full of clutter. Always. And right now especially. Full of clutter. But God, transform our minds. Transform us by the working of your word that we see that we're above that, God. And when you're above that, guess what? You're even above the natural laws of this world. You're above the natural laws. They're not absolute laws because God can come in and change them at any time. You're above that. I am going to touch on a little bit about what's on that paper, but I feel like the, I need to go this way with this Colossians. In Him, all things consist. The whole world is held together by His Word. So if He decides to change... Change it up just a little bit. You know, gravity. Let's just let's give you an example. You're standing on a cliff, right? And if you're standing on that cliff and suddenly you go take a diving leap off that cliff, you're probably going to die if it's a high cliff. Gravity is going to take you down. That's a natural law. So if you've got a hang glider and you go take off off that cliff, you're probably going to soar. Why? Because there's another law, and it's a natural law. It's the law of aerodynamics. Well, the law of aerodynamics can, in some cases, supersede the law of gravity. So you have some laws that can supersede other things. I want you to see yourself as having the law of God, which supersedes all natural law. Somebody died, natural law says they're going to stay dead. God can supersede that with his absolute law, and he can turn that around. The Bible says... They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know, they'll tread upon serpents. The Bible says they shall drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm them. Hallelujah. I, I pray that even over my food. When I eat my food and we pray, I speak to my food. And I speak that any deadly thing in my food, whether it be a harmful bacteria, whether it be a harmful chemical toxin, I bind it and render it null and void right then in the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not foolish. Like I always say, you can't live on Doritos and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. I'm not foolish. But when you go to a restaurant and you order food, you don't know what's happened to that food. Did they properly store it? But you live above the natural law. You live above the natural law that says if Martha goes out to eat food today and it's been tainted somehow, then her body's going to take it in and be sick. No, Martha lives above the natural law. Martha speaks that word because by his word, all things consist in this earth. The world is held together by His Word. But His supernatural law supersedes those natural laws, and she can pray that no harm come to her, that no deadly thing can harm her. We've got to start walking in that mindset. We've got to start realizing we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That's going to change your perspective when you go out in the world. That's going to change your perspective when you go to work. That's going to change your perspective when Rachel goes to school, whoever else is at work in school. It's going to change your perspective. When all of a sudden you see yourself seated with Christ in heavenly realms, you're going to be able to look at everybody around you with a different eye. Not, again, a prideful eye that you're above them. But you're going to be able to discern things about them that you couldn't if you were just right there with them, like you're part of them. Now, in this scripture in Colossians, let's look back at it again. This is talking about Jesus, who is the, this is verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are, that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and by him all things consist. Do you realize that even the demonic powers had their start in him? That's, that's a tricky thing. People say, did he create the devil? Well, if he didn't, who did? Of course he created the devil. The devil was an archangel, they tell us, in heaven. The things, the things that we wrestle against somehow sprang from God's creation. Now, granted, there's a fallen world we live in. Granted, Malachi, where are you going? Me and Abby and Rachel are going outside. Well, make sure you feel the Lord to do 
that. Because you still need to hear the word, too. I'm going to trust he's feeling the Lord on that one. I've questioned before, and I've been wrong. But when you're talking about... When you're talking about... Even with the fallen man here, golly, I just tell you, what did I just say before they went out? That distracted me. Don't pray for me not to be distracted. Principality says, uh, Thank you. He, he, all this stuff sprang from his creation. Even though it was tainted and twisted, it sprang from his creation. So when we were here the other night and we were praying against things in this town, principalities, strongholds, demonic powers, that's already under our feet. Yes, we may have to deal with it. You may have to deal with something in your life that you're battling, this throat thing. She's had to deal with this. It's under her feet already. You heard the power and anointing that Martha used when she went back there and prayed. You've got to start seeing that. It's already under your feet. Because the Bible says that when Christ came and his great sacrifice that he put everything under his feet. That's the way we've got to start seeing our lives. We're walking and seated with Christ in heavenly places and the things on the earth are under your feet. You may still struggle with them, but your mindset says, it's under my feet. It's already conquered because all things are Him. Everything's held together by Him. Principalities, they're under His feet. You know, we prayed. We prayed on Thursday night. Because we felt strongly that one of the final principalities or strongholds or whatever you want to call it in this town was almost like a, uh, well, the Bible calls it Leviathan. Uh, a lot of preachers, you hear preaching, I've heard it on TV, preach about Leviathan. You Sandy's not, and she's probably heard it. There's a Leviathan spirit. One preacher that I was reading, Shannon sent me some stuff, said one of the strongest spirits that he's ever felt that comes against ministries is the spirit of Leviathan. What was Leviathan? In the Bible, Leviathan was this huge sea creature, like a dragon. It's mentioned many times in the Bible. And uh, so it stayed hidden. <coughs> Think about that. It was able to easily hide, but it was huge. It was not some petty little thing. It was huge. So you can imagine that this would be the spirit that would tend to come against ministries because it's big and it wants to absolutely just devastate whatever God's trying to do. Well, here's what God told us to do. And I want to tell you this as a testimony for what happened the other night, as well as to increase your faith that all things are under our feet. Somebody turn to Ezekiel 29. It doesn't have to be everybody. Just somebody read me. Ezekiel 29. I want to hear at least the first three to four verses. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. And I'm going to challenge you to take something in your life Whatever it is you're up against. If it's a physical manifestation of a sickness, if it's a relationship issue, whatever it is, I don't know, financial issue, I want you to start to see it in the, in the realm of what I'm getting ready to show you in Ezekiel 29. Read me at least 1, 2, and 3, and I'll tell you if you need to go further. I don't have it. Somebody read it. 1, 2, and 3? Yeah. In the 10th year, in the 10th month, in the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him, and all against all Egypt. Speak and say, Thus said the Lord, God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own. And I have made it for myself. Read but I will put hooks yes. in thy jaws, and I will cause the fish of the, thy rivers to stick unto thy scales, and I will bring thee up out of the midst of thy rivers, and all the fish of thy rivers shall stick unto thy scales. One more. And I will leave thee thrown into yes. the wilderness, and thee and all the, the fish of thy rivers. Thou shalt fall upon the open fields. Thou shalt not be brought together nor gathered. I have given thee for meat to the beasts of the field yes. and to the fowls of the heaven. That's what I wanted to hear. Leviathan. In this scripture, Pharaoh was compared to Leviathan, a great sea dragon. And where was that great sea dragon? Down in the river. 
down in the river. And what did God say He was going to do? He was going to expose that creature. I want you to think about whatever you're going through in your life. It's time for that to be exposed. I want to know the root of this. We are claiming, along with this bold prayer by Martha, that there's total healing here. We don't want it coming back. Sometimes you got to pluck things up by the root. You call it by name. What is it in your life that's like a leviathan that's just slinking along underwater? And what did God say he was going to do? God said, I'm going to expose it. Why? Because he's above all the natural laws. He can do as he pleases. All things consist in him and by him. Amen. Hey, thank you, Alan. So he said right here in this scripture, how did he do it? He said, I will put my hook in its jaw. And I will draw it out because when you draw it out of its negative element, it can't live anymore because it needed that underground water to slink through. What did he say he was going to do then? He said, I'm going to cast it to the wilderness, to the dry places. And when you cast it to the dry places, he said, that's where it's going to meet its demise. Mm -hmm. What are you going through in your life? You need it out. You need it out. i got some things I need some answers on. Don't you? I don't want a Leviathan in my life swimming along underwater undetected. What I'm asking God to do is put the hook in its jaws. That's what we did the other night within this town. We said out there in that street, put the hook in its jaws, draw it out of the water, cast it to the dry places where it cannot affect this town any longer. It is not God's will that these things that sometimes we suffer through, that they affect our lives this way. It's not His will. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Change your mindset that you see yourself there and you see all of these things under your... Ooh, that made a good sound. <laughs> under your feet. <coughs> it is under your feet. He's holding everything together by His Word. So you speak His Word into the atmosphere to change and transform your life. Now while you're in Ezekiel... Slip over to 37. After we prayed out here Thursday night and we commanded that Leviathan dominion or principality in this town to be pulled up out of the waters and cast into the dry places, because you, uh, let's go back to that just a minute. It was compared to Pharaoh here. Let my people go. Let my people go. There's been something in this town holding this town people for way too long. And it's compared to Pharaoh saying, let my people go. We dealt with that the other night. It's the same thing for you in your life. You look at that thing you're facing, that mountain you've been facing, and you say, let me go. Let God's people, that'd be me. I am God's people. Are you God? I am God's people. I'm God's people, whatever you'd want to say. These things can't hold me in bondage anymore. I'm looking at those things right dead in the eye, and I'm saying, let me go. Whether it be poverty, whether it be financial troubles, whether it be relationship troubles, whether it be a manifestation of a sickness that keeps trying to come back, I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, let me go. Let me go. There will be no spirit that will bind nor hinder God's people because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. And you say, well, it keeps bombarding me. It keeps coming back. I keep going to the doctor and he says, I still have it. You continue to look at it and deny its right to exist in your life. I look at my bank account and it's still empty. You still look at it in the face and you say, well, let me go. Because I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. All things in this earth consist by Him. It's held together by His Word. The very air that I breathe is held together by His Word. I exist in these heavenly places and realms with Him. This other stuff is under my feet. Now let me go. Unbind me. Go to the dry places. And in Ezekiel 37, somebody start with verse 8. I'll definitely want to hear 8 and 9. You, you know the story here. We won't go through it again. The basis is, there's a valley full of dry bones. Just bones. And Ezekiel says, you know, I assume he's looking at them going, okay, a bunch of dry bones, what am I supposed to do, Lord? Can these bones live? Well, God began to tell him what to speak and what to prophesy to those bones, that those bones began to come together. And as they began to come together, you can imagine that every part of those bones, the body started to be formed. It doesn't tell you that every vein and artery and, 
and caterpillar and corpuscle and everything started to be formed. And all of a sudden it says sinews, that's like muscles, came upon those bones. The flesh came upon those bones. It was looking good, just like Elijah said a while ago, like a cosmetic Christian. It was looking good. But what was missing? Somebody read me verse 8. Ooh, thank you, God. Somebody read the whole verse of 8. That's right. No breath in them. Read me that. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. There was no breath in them. Read me verse 10, no, 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus said the Lord God, Come from, from the four winds, O breath, and breath upon these slain, that they may live. Read me one more. So I prophesied, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Oh, an exceeding great army. A valley of dry bones. He prophesied that they come together, flesh, sinews covered them, but all of a sudden they're standing on their feet, and they look like a mighty army, but there's no breath in them. That's what we did the other night. When we cast some things out of this town, pulled it up with hooks in the jaws and cast it out to the dry places. What does the Bible say you do when you cast something out? You've got to fill that space back up. The Bible says if you've got a person who even is possessed of devils and you cast those out, you need to make sure that you fill that space back up with God. We went into the backyard back here as, as Malachi felt at that point, and we prophesied for the winds of God to come into this town, to blow into this town. That's what it's going to take for the cosmetic Christians Elijah was talking about earlier. Cosmetic Christians look okay. They look like Christians. They're standing on their feet. There's, <coughs> there's sinew. There's flesh upon them. But there's no breath. There's no spirit. So when you're looking upon the things that you face and you take authority and say, I don't care what I see, I'm looking it in the face and saying, get out of here. God's putting the hook in your jaw. He's going to cast you out from where you've been hiding and slithering along underwater. Whatever it is that's been affecting me. And it's cast out to the dry places. And now I speak and I prophesy. I prophesy to those dry bones that life comes into those dry bones. That by the Spirit these things live. Because if all around us He's holding everything together by His Word. By Him all things consist. This chair is held together by His Word. Do you know that? This whole house is held together by His Word. You're living and breathing right now by His Word. So when you speak His Word into the atmosphere, you speak His Word, you prophesy His Word into the atmosphere, you've got a double portion already right there because His Word's holding everything together. So when you prophesy His Word into His Word, you've got a double portion that you step into and say, this stuff is under my feet. It's pulled up out of the waters, cast into the dry places. It's under my feet. I don't care what I see. I know what I know. I know what I hear. And I hear the sound of that mighty rushing wind. I hear the sound of those dry bones as they come together and flesh comes upon them. And I prophesy breath into those. Prophesy breath into your situation. Prophesy the Spirit of God into your situation as your mind is transformed in this new year. That you are seated with Him in heavenly places. And things are under your feet. And as they're under your feet, you are speaking the breath of God into the atmosphere and into your situation. Into your situation. Prophesy the Word of God. Breathe the breath of God into your situation. You will see it change. You will see life come to those dry bones in your life and they will stand up as an exceeding great and mighty army, which is what we are and we're going forth into 2016 this way. Now I tell you what, I ooh, I feel this. Thank you, God. Not a lick of this was planned, but, but this I had felt last night. You need to get those kids. We're going to close out with this. Get the kids. Anointed 
anointed in this room. Alan was in other rooms and he missed it. But it was anointed in this room right here as I made up praise dances. And I began to play the CD from last Super Summer and from last Stoke Stoke. And I realized what, as y'all had told me, girls, what an anointed intercession this song is. The I hear the sound. God gave me the movements for this dance as a means of intercession. And when I come here and I do these movements, I feel. When it says we're taking it back and we're throwing down strongholds, I feel it when we do it. I've asked those kids to do this this morning. I'm going to join along with the parts that I know. We're closing out to service. I want you to go home today changed and different, bolder, stronger. Because you know that all things consist of Him. The things that are not of God, they're under your feet. The natural laws are under your feet. Go ahead. You're hearing the sound. I thank you, Alan. That's my husband. I hear the sound of a new breath. Come on. There you go. I'm doing it with them. When we get to the last part, it says we're taking it back. Sometimes you'll say we're, we're we pulling it down. We're pulling it down. I feel this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We got to find it. See if this is it. They haven't done this in a long time, but I told them they had to try to hear the sound of the new breeze. Don't change all the gates. It's 
voice is different. That's beautiful. That was one of the best. Oh, is that beautiful? Led me to that scripture because mm. he knew I needed that. He knew we needed that. Whew. Now I need to sit down. <laughs> <laughs>